Welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to answer a question from one of our viewers. We have been literally inundated with a request from Michael Kirkham. And Michael Kirkham has said to us, could you do a video showing how to find the resistance of say a third unknown resistor and what the calculation might be? So you know the total resistance, you know the resistance of resistor one and two, but the third is unknown. Well, Michael, you asked for it, so that's what we're about to view. So in this video, we're going to have uh, three resistors connected in parallel. We won't know what the value of one of the resistors is, but we'll measure the total resistance, and then we'll show you how to rearrange the calculation so we can find the value of the missing resistor. So let's bring the camera in, and we'll get started. So as you can see, we've got our circuit set up here. We've got uh, a 27 ohm resistor, an 18 ohm resistor and a mystery resistor. So we don't know what the value of this one is just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the resistance using our multimeter. We've got this set to ohms as you've seen in a previous video. So we'll turn the multimeter on and we'll see what the total resistance of the circuit is. So as you can see there, the resistance is sort of flicking about between 6.7 and 6.8. So that'll be the value that we use for our total resistance. So what we're going to do now is do some calculations and we're going to see just how close we can get to our mystery resistor value and then we'll reveal that and see if we've got it right. So let's do some maths. So let's see what we can do to calculate what this missing resistor value is. So we're going to call our missing resistor value here R1. So let's start off with our basic formula so we can see where we're at. So we've got 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now we'll go back through and we'll put the numbers in. So we've got 1 over, now in this case we actually know what the total resistance is because we measured it and we saw that it was uh, between 6.7 and 6.8. It was sort of flickering about between those two. So what we'll do is we'll use the upper value, we'll use 6.8. The reality is it's probably about 6.75 because it was flickering between the two. But we'll go with one over 6.8. So that was the total resistance that we measured in the circuit. We don't yet know what R1 is, but we do know that R2 is worth 18 and our three is worth 27. So we've got our formula here. Now, there's any number of ways that we could kind of tackle this, that we could start to approach this, but because we're adding one over 18 and we're adding one over 27 to this side, if we subtract those values from both sides, over here they'll just cancel out and we'll just be left with one over R1 and we'll end up with a formula on this side that looks like this. So we've got one over 6.8, and we're going to subtract one over 18, and we're also going to subtract one over 27, and that will leave us with our value of one over R1. So let's put this into the calculator and see what this looks like. So we've got, uh, now I'm going to do this as a fraction. You can use the reciprocal button on this calculator, this x to the minus 1, but I think at this stage it will be easier if we just use the, uh, the fraction button. So we'll put this in as 1 over 6.8 and then we will subtract from that another fraction, 1 over 18 see why I love this calculator so much. And then we've got, oops, that went horribly wrong. Let's try and change that. And then we're gonna subtract from that. We've got one over 27, okay. So that gives an answer of 25 over 459. If you wanted to see that as a decimal, we could write it out like that, but can you see this is one of those times 
when actually it's quite nice to have the fraction because we can write this ridiculously long number out really nice and accurately by having it in its fractional form, which is much easier. So we now know that if we do this side of the calculation, we get uh, 25 over 459, and that is equal to, notice that's one over R1. So you can remember now how we find the actual value, how we change this from being one over R1 to R1. Well, we just flip both sides of the calculation over. This side becomes R1 divided by one, which just leaves us with R1 by itself. And this side becomes 459 over 25. So we've got 459 over 25, and that is equal to just R1 by itself. Really, it's R1 over one, but dividing by one, the number just stays the same. So let's flip this upside down and see what we get. So we do 459 divided by 25, 4, 5, 9, use the fraction button again, over 25, and that's going to give us an answer of, again, 459 over 25, super helpful, but if we push the SD button, we'll see that we get a value of 18.36 ohms. So we should have a resistor that has a value of 18.36 ohms. So in this case, R1 is equal to 18 0.36 ohms. So the value that we just calculated, let's see if that value is going to be anywhere near our mystery resistor value. Okay, so we'll do the reveal now. And we can see there that that is an 18 ohm resistor, which is really nice and close to the value that we calculated. We can see that it's well within the tolerance rating of the resistor. So that's the method for calculating the value of an unknown resistor when you know total resistance and some other values of resistance in the circuit. So, Michael, we hope this video has been some help.